Seems like you guys love my house updates and trailer updates and all my updates and stuff the most. So here's an update. I just got this badass gooseneck trailer. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I needed a gooseneck car hauler for the new Dodge. You know, you just saw the video of the new Dodge. Oh man, I left my pink lemonade sitting out here in the sun. I bet it's hot as shit. Ah, it's, eh, it's like a bottle of warm piss. And hide it right there under my wheel. Let's see if the, <laughs> the Vegas sun. So yeah, this is a Sundowner trailer. Uh, these are all aluminum. These are high dollar trailers, man. This trailer probably was 40, 50 grand when it was new five years ago. Take a look at it there. And uh, what I thought was cool about it, I wanted it in white, but silver's great. And um, it's five years old, double axle. I wanted a triple, but what was cool about this was this pop-out door, right? This entire thing here comes up, opens like a DeLorean going and so that you can get out, right? You got a ramp back here. Now this company that I got it from, or the people I should say, they were a moving company. So I've been cleaning it out, I've been hosing it off. And uh, they, you know, they were like a moving company like Mayflower and they moved stuff. So they were using this to haul people's stuff, right? But this thing is all aluminum. And what they've done is they've used some high density foam and insulated it. So it looks terrible, but um, it's nice and cool in here. I'm telling you, it is, just darn right chilly in here. Plastic here for no, no reason. So it was absolutely filthy in here. So I've been cleaning it out. So yeah, you can see the, the this this fender thing comes completely off. And then you have, when you pull your car in here, you can open the door. So this whole thing opens up from the outside. And then when you pull your car in, you can get out. This is kind of a stripped down model. It's got a ton of E-Track in it though. Not to mention these integrated D-rings. You can see the floor is aluminum. This whole thing is aluminum. It's all wet because I've been hosing it off. This is kind of a lot of wasted space, you know. It's like, I don't know if they were really utilizing this at all because they don't have any straps up there. But my idea was to come back in and just do the whole thing in FRP. And, uh, you know, fiberglass, fiberglass reinforced panel. And just uh, coat all the, you know, I'd have to pull those E-Track off, put all the walls up, and it'd be nice finished walls. That would add to the weight and the cost, but it would be a much nicer trailer. And I was also playing around with the idea of building a living quarters here. Putting like a wall at this entrance with another entry door, mattress up there, microwave, fridge, little toilet sink, little living area, you know, maybe a chair, whatever. Put my Eames chair right there. TV, I don't know. Just some ideas, kicking around. Um... But yeah, I've been I've, I've been hosing this thing off for like the last hour with this crappy hose. Let me try to. I know what you're thinking. Oh, boy, I had to go. No matter how much I spray, I just keep getting more and more crap out of here. All this black dust and dirt. They never clean this thing, ever. Look at that. So I've been I've been doing this for a solid hour. You wouldn't believe how bad it looked before. It looks fantastic now. You wouldn't believe it. I'm turn this hose off. There you go. He's he's one of those expanded hoses. Those things suck. I was just telling my dude this, you know, a minute ago. I was like, you know, okay, so people want to know how much I paid for this thing. I got this thing. Uh, the dude had listed it on Facebook Marketplace, I think for like 30 grand, 29 grand. And he kept lowering the price, kept lowering the price. I think he like got it down to 22. I showed up with like 18K in cash. And I said, bro, uh, this thing's been for sale for months. You haven't sold it. It's all filthy and dirty. I got this stack of $100 bills uh, that takes up way less room than this 40 50 trailer. So he lamented and he did the deal with me. And I gotta tell you, you know, just, it looks so much better just me washing it. If I could give you this one piece of advice about selling literally anything, it's just this, clean it. Clean the gosh darn thing. Whether it's a car, a, uh, a table, a chair, anything, just clean it. If you just took the little bit of time to wash it down, clean it, make it look pretty, um, it really does make a difference. It shows that you care. It shows that you take care of it. They clearly weren't taking care of this thing. And uh, I mean, they didn't even bother just to hose it out ever. 
you can tell it's never been washed, you know? So were they greasing the fittings? Were they checking the axles? They probably were doing that because they didn't want to break down, but they just didn't care enough to keep the stuff clean. So they're moving people's stuff and probably getting people's stuff dirty. You know, just how did it get so filthy? I mean, just absolutely filthy, covered in this black crud dust everywhere. So if you just took the time to clean stuff, it would make such a difference. That's my uh, number one selling advice. And take good pictures, good pictures, and clean the stuff. What a difference it makes. Because I bet I could sell this trailer today for 25. I could just do a few simple little repairs. Like for instance, I'll take you over here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like the thing that holds this fender on are these little rubber brackets. This is like they put on a Yeti cooler, right? These are $6 a piece or something, right? So several of them are broken off. Like these are broke off over here. So they, these dummies were just using a strap to hold the fender on. They didn't bother buying new, new rubber grommet, you know, snaps. These pistons were out. It cost me $23 for a pair of the pistons. I'm, they're, on, they're on the way. All, some of these little fittings are just a few dollars a piece. There's like a basic foam rubber that goes around the fender. That, that's why there's so much crud in here. Like you can see, they obviously had a blowout, which is how this one dented, right? So that needs to be smacked back in with a hammer, and then I need to come in here with my welder, and I need to TIG weld this seam. That's one thing about aluminum trailers that's kind of a bad thing. You gotta maintenance them once in a while. He showed me some repairs they did up here with these angle brackets, because what starts to happen is uh, you start to get cracks. So they welded these angles in because this started to separate and crack. So if you're gonna have a trailer like this and you're gonna be really kicking its ass, uh, using it a lot, you're gonna have to do that kind of maintenance. And that's the thing. Now this, the, the, the sticker on the back says there's a, like, a, I don't know, eight year structural warranty on it or something. But uh, it's all wet and muddy here for me cleaning it. Couple little whoopsies there. But this is all stainless steel side. So it's missing a fender. And you can get these fenders probably, they're probably 50 bucks. He could have put a little bit of time and never look, it's missing lug nuts. What in the, hmm. All right, I gotta fix that. A couple of rivets a lot loose. Anyway, just a little bit of care. And he probably would have got the money he was asking. But he, did, that, he didn't want to spend the time on it. Like for instance, who orders a damn $40,000 trailer and doesn't spend the extra 500 bucks for the power jacks? You cheap fuck. All right, so I'm gonna put the electric power jacks. They make an adapter that you take this off and it's got a socket on it and you can just take a impact and, and do it, you know? But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the electric power jack on there with its own battery system. It doesn't have any spare tires. Um, I'm probably gonna replace this round drop goose coupler here because it's all janky. And I'm gonna probably get, maybe get one of those shocker ones with the airbag, fix all this up. But otherwise, it's in great condition, you know? If I wanted to buy one of these new, I'd be spending over $40,000 for a 40 foot all aluminum trailer, especially a Sundowner. It's a, it's a pretty decent built unit. But let me tell you, pulling it with this truck, this truck did not give a shit about this trailer. Like this truck has so much power. I hooked it up, I hooked this thing up to it and it just, it wasn't even there. It didn't even notice. Like, oh, there's a trailer. Had no idea. I don't think about it. Went to like this little surplus auction, or not an auction, it was a place that does like uh, buybacks, returns. So I bought some stuff today, like half off, really cheap. Check this out. Picked up this Husky red cabinet. I wanna say I paid 150 bucks for it or something, 100 bucks. I mean, it's the thing about it is it's a really bad design because it's shallow. The doors are heavier than the unit, so it keeps wanting to fall forward. You can see how wonky it is. It really needs to be like screwed to the wall or something. So I tried to put some heavy things in there just to, I put that Harbor Freight plug in there. You know, you, you start to see the difference. Like these Harbor Freight Icon cabinets, these are like 1500 a piece. But like they, you really see kind of where the money goes when you see how thick it's, like this door, this thing is not janky and wonky. Like that thing, you know, that thing is crap. What else? There's the DeLorean. Uh, what else is happening? It's decorating my little building out here like it's a store. Last thing I need, right? Look, here's a phone. Hi, hello. It's just a payphone. And a newspaper stand. I just thought it was funny, that's all. 
thing. Picked up this pressure washer, floor pressure washer for like 15 bucks. Got this zero water thing, so it was 32, it was half price, 15 bucks. I got this total bidet for 15 bucks. Bunch of little trees, 50 cents a piece. Look at this, I got this Doc Brown guy. He was like five bucks. But that was cool. Um, just random crap. This is why I have buildings full of stuff. I just have like, like this. Why do I have this? Why are you here? Why? Same reason this guy's here. Why are you here? We have such sights to show you, like all of this shit that Bob has in his building. I'm a hoarder. I have just crap. I don't, I don't need 10 vanilla little trees. Well, yeah, I do. Vanilla little trees are awesome. Backyard's looking good. My boy Hippie's been working his little ass off. My landscaper dude. Well, he's not a landscaper, he's just like a general helper. So we've got all these palm trees growing here and they're not supposed to be here. This is a Mexican palm. Like there's one, there's one, there's one. They're growing up like weeds everywhere. They're basically, I think they might be part of like the bamboo family. Now, if you go buy one of these, they're like a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks. Let me scroll through here. But um, they're growing everywhere. So he's been cleaning up all this weeds. But if you went to go buy one of these, now these are probably 150 bucks at that stage, right? You know, but if you got a bit, look how big these are and they grow a couple of feet a year. I don't even remember these being here at all when we first moved here. And so the guy from the nursery said, we need to get these out of here because they're gonna screw up our concrete and screw up the pool. And I'm like, oh my God, how are we gonna get it out? And I don't wanna destroy it. I wanna to try to transplant them and park, them, put them in the front of the house. So we got one, two, three. That's three of them right there. There's another one growing right there, gosh darn hell so they're just everywhere <laughs> this is part of my haul of crap got some uh, dishwasher cleaner some day quill some night quill i guess this is a beard straightener got some uh five hour energy some super glue apple cords never have enough of those come on all right a chocolate orange i mean all this stuff was just pennies on the dollar i mean literally pennies on the dollar like this was marked, what, 50 cents? I got for 25 cents for these straws, bendy straws. Just stuff, right? Like, you know, steals. Just like this chair I got from the same place. I've, I've always done stuff like that. Get, get stuff super cheap. Chocolate orange. Ever had a chocolate orange? Mmm. I love chocolate and orange. We just delivered those rubber tie downs for the vendors. 20 bucks on Amazon, whatever, for the whole bag of them. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Dude could have fixed his trailer up and got his money out of it. Ah, hot lemonade. I need to go put that in the fridge. What else is going on? Here's my latest rich people problem. I got this delivered uh, yesterday. This is a brand, it's dirty because I've been washing. It's a brand new Rolex Submariner, uh, brand new 2023 model. Now I was getting this to replace my uh, Sea Dweller. You can see why I bought the Sea Dweller. I did a video about this like three years ago. It's got, it's bigger. It's got the little red Sea Dweller on it. It just doesn't carry the respect of the Submariner, but it weighs a full ounce more. I mean, the thing is thick, it's thick. All right, thing is thick, thick like your mama. And I'm trying to decide, okay, which one, do I keep them both? Like, do I just stick one in the drawer and keep it? Do I go with the sea dweller or do I go with the sub? All right, here they both are on wrist, all right? So here's, here's the situation, all right? Like, it's hard to, to figure this out, but the, the sea dweller is considerably thicker and bigger. Thank you. I mean, it's hard to tell on video here, you know, a couple of things you'll notice is the Sea Dweller has a matte finish style. The Sub has a gloss finish. I kind of like the matte. I kind of like the Sea Dweller more. Also, I put a brushed finish on it um, just because. I don't know, man. I'm torn. What do y'all think? You can say in the comments what you think. The thing is, is that, you know, the trolls that make all these comments aren't probably watching right now. But when I did the video of this watch, back in, you know, a couple years ago when I first got it. Slide over. 
Uh, I was comparing it to my um, Daytona, which I don't have anymore. I bought the Daytona. I was all excited to get it. And then it was buyer's remorse. I bought the watch for 18 grand. I had it. I wore it around for a couple days. And then I realized I hated it. I thought it was too small. And I just couldn't read it. You know, I wear like prescription glasses for distance. And I couldn't see it up close. I'd look at it. I'm like, I don't know what time it is. And I realized I didn't like it. I didn't like all the stuff. It didn't have a date on it. It had all these dials on it. And I just decided I didn't want it after I got it. You know, you want something, then you get it. You know, be careful what you wish for. So a friend of mine said, hey, man, I'd love to have that watch. And I go, look, I got time and effort into this thing. And you know I got it for a good deal. So I'll sell it to you for 20 And you know that's a better de buddy deal. Even though I'm making a profit, you know, I had to drive to a couple hours to go get this thing and put up the money. He said, you know what, that's fair to me. I'll gladly pay 20 for that watch. He gave me 20 cash for that Daytona. I mean, the thing went up to 30 grand, right? I should have held on to it. So I turned around and bought this. I bought this Sea Dweller. And um, people kept commenting in the video that as I was holding them, they were, they were bumping into each other. Dude, you can't hurt these watches. Like I did this in the last video. Somebody, they lost their fucking minds. Oh my God. Oh, I can't believe you treat a watch like, let me tell you something. The last Submariner I had, which was a 1990, the old style. The old style didn't have the solid and links, had hollow connector. I mean, it didn't have the glide lock, like not like this watch, probably an ounce lighter, way different watch. And I beat the ever-loving shit out of that watch. I wore it every single day for 15 years. I bought it for, from 2004, and then I wore it every single day working on cars. That was a two-tone gold watch, right? You've seen it. You go watch any of my old videos, I'm wearing that watch every single day. I built dozens of cars. I worked up my shop. I crawled on the ground. I wore it. It was my only watch. I wore that watch every single day, working on cars, crawling around on the concrete, scratching it up. And you cannot hurt one of them, man. I mean, now I did finally... I forget how I, I dropped it on the concrete or, or, or it flew off my wrist, but it, it hit hard and it broke the pallet fork and a couple of the jewels inside. Now I have my own tool kits. I actually service my own watches. I take the backs off, I change the links, I clean them, I oil them and everything. And so uh, I know that these things are really tough. Now, if you whack it real hard on the concrete face down, you can crack this sapphire crystal. You can also split one of the little donut rings that's on those uh, ruby jewels, right? It's got like 23 jewel movement. So yeah, you can break them, but through everyday use fr from doing this, you're not going to hurt the watch. I know people are going, ah! if you're one of these poor people who buys a Rolex and puts it in a box and keeps it in your drawer because you're afraid to wear your watch, I'm going to save my old lady for the next guy. Hope she stays nice and tight. Listen, wear your shit, drive your cars, bang your old lady. Listen to Bob. You're going to die soon. I got a box of ashes over there with my mom in it. Right? Wait, you're going to save stuff? Don't wear it. Right? Now, if you're buying an investment watch, like a Daytona, and you get it retail, and you're going to just don't wear it at all. Keep in the box. But if you're going to have a watch that you're going to wear, if you wear it once, you're going to scratch it up. Okay? I've only, I've been wearing this watch a day and it's already got scratches on it. Of course it does because I whack it around. But it's like, what am I going to do? Tiptoe around the tulips all day long, scared to death about scratching my Rolex. If you can't afford to scratch it, don't buy it. That's my advice for today. Now, it's a tool watch. It's made out of one of the highest grade stainless steels, has one of the hardest crystal sapphires in it, has one of the most robust movements in it. There's a reason the Rolex is what it is, because back when they built this thing in the 50s, Navy SEALs were using these to go diving. It was the toughest, most indestructible watch you could get back then. And the ones they're making now, even better. They have, I mean, this bezel is ceramic. I mean, it's just like, it is so hard to mess one of these up. Now you will scratch it. I'm gonna tell you what I do to my watch. And there's people out there that are watch people that are gonna, their, their heads are gonna explode when I tell them this. They're gonna be like, oh, you destroyed the value of your watch. Bullshit. All right, I'm gonna tell you what I do to these watches, okay? What I do is about every three to six months, I take a scouring pad, a purple scotch bright, and I polish the wash. Now, every week I clean the wash, uh, the watch with a toothbrush and Dawn dish soap. Clean in between all the links, clean all the crud. You get this black crud and sweat and acid. I just clean it with a toothbrush inside and out and clean it with Dawn, wash it, put dishwasher, whatever. No, I don't put it in the dishwasher, but I clean it, right? 
And then, and then I, uh, and then I also use this um, this polish on it. Let me get this stuff here. It's called Cape Cod Metal Polishing. It's this impregnated cotton, right? And uh, it's got kind of a funky smell. But anyway, I clean, I polish, I polish the watch. Now they say never polish a watch. That's true on certain watches. You don't want to do that. But if it's a tool watch that you wear daily, like this one, I mean, look, I don't know if you'll be able to tell with the camera, but I don't know if you can see how clean that brush finish is. I get constant compliments about the brush finish that I do, that I have on my watches, right? And so what I do is I just take it like this, and then I take a scotch Bright and I just, I clean it. We're using Dawn Dish Soap as a lubricant, right? And you go in a line, right? And then I get all the, you get all these little scratches in here and in here, all along the side, especially on the back. Now you wanna be careful on the crown. You don't wanna grind down the crown, but you wanna get in here. Now, Rolex dress watch polishing. A Rolex dress watch will have fine polish on the center leaks and then brush on the outside. I prefer brush on the whole thing. I love the brush finish. Uh, just like I have certain rings that I like like this gold uh, ring, you know, I put a, I put, well, it looks kind of glossy. I need to do it again, but I, I like to keep a brush finish on this gold ring. Um, but anyway, so that's what I do. It gets the scratches out and things. Uh, you, you probably shouldn't do that on a gold watch. Although I do like the satin gold finish. I used to love it when I take my two-tone watch and I would do that and people used to compliment and go, wow, that satin gold finish looks amazing. Because when you put the gloss on it, like in two seconds, it's gonna get scratched. You just can't wear it without getting scratched. So by putting this brush finish on it, it with it you, you're you're getting rid of the scratches that were there, and it resists the scratches. And it's hard to show you on camera because I'm using the front camera, this iPhone, you know. But just trust me that it's a good look, right? So I haven't done that to this one. I mean, you can kind of tell the difference uh, because this one's brand new out of the box. I mean, I've literally had this watch a day. It's a brand new out of the box watch. And uh, and I got it for retail. It's almost impossible to get a Rolex for retail. But I got a buddy hookup, and I bought it for actual retail price uh, that's on the website, plus tax and shipping. And that's virtually impossible to do. I haven't been able to buy a you, – you haven't been able to get a retail Rolex in three, four years since pandemic. Uh, so anyway, I'm trying to decide, okay, do I sell this? Do I keep this watch or, or sell this one? I don't want to sell this one because I got a buddy hookup on it. I don't want to flip the watch and piss off my dealer friend who hooked me up with it. Uh, it, it's smaller, it's lighter. I think I have a small wrist. I mean, you can see how small my wrist is. I do have a small wrist. I've been driving that Rolls Royce so long that I've lost, I've, my, 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 my hands have atrophied from all the power steering. You know, I used to drive Harleys and stuff, you know, forklifts. And now I ride around in that Rolls Royce and my arms have gotten smaller. I'm not even making a joke because I, 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 I point, I go, Hey guys, go move that. I used to do it myself. I am getting older and richer. And when you get old and rich, you point a lot. Move, see that over there? Put that over there. I ain't lifting shit. <laughs> I did it for 40 years. I, I'm chilling. Anyway, so I'm trying to, you know, th this thing is just, it's just a big watch. And it, all right, let me, let me show you. Look, I like the watch kind of tight, but look, see how it moves with the wrist? Now, I'm going to show you the, what's happening here. When I put the sea dweller on. This thing is so chunky. But see, maybe that's what's cool about it. But check it out, watch. See the slop in it? It's like, it's big. It's huge. It's a big watch. It weighs a whole ounce more. So that's like taking this watch and just gluing a Kruger to the top of it. I mean, <laughs> and the thing is, the Sea Dweller doesn't seem to get the love that the Submariner does. You never hear anybody say, oh, I want a Sea Dweller. Even though it's basically the same watch, it's just a bigger, thicker watch. And I think it's gorgeous. But they've done some things to it to make it slightly different. And you didn't know it was going to be a watch video, did you? But you're learning. Um, you know, the matte dial, the thicker, you know, like when you see them side by side, it's like, I can see it. It's like this thing's considerably larger. But I'm telling you, it's it's a hard decision, you know. And maybe I'll just hold on to both of them for a while. Um, they're not getting any cheaper. This thing is like currency. This is money. You might as well be cash. I might as well be holding like 15 grand in cash. That's what this is. 
Not really. If I wanted to go down to the pawn shop, I could get 10 grand for this watch like that fast, instantaneously. If I said on this channel I wanted 12,000 for this, I would get inundated with people wanting to buy it. And it's like, you know, when you think about taking your money, like you can have just money um, in your pocket. I set these here so I could prove this point here. But like, you know, you can have $2,000 in your pocket or you can have a coin, a gold coin, a Kruger Rand. So like that right there weighs the same as this. It's like... <laughs> So you take a stack of Kruger Rands or American Eagles or whatever. I like Kruger Rands because they're recognizable people like them. So that's five of those. That's, that's $10,000 worth of gold right there. Flexing. Um, but listen, 10,000 bucks isn't what it used to be anymore. I mean, unless you're like Taco Bell poor. And for those of you that are, I'm real sorry. But hey, we all started off that way. I started off at Jack in the Box. One day you too will be able to buy one of these and it won't be no big deal. So, um, the thing is, is once you kind of get up into the level of middle class where you can afford to buy a watch on your credit card or whatever, and it ain't no thing. I mean, like the dude, oh, I wired him the money. Dude sent me a bill. It was like 11,000, whatever. I wired him the money, got the watch the next day delivered. Fantastic service. And, um, you know, but this is currency. So it's like I could sell it and turn it into cash or I could hold on to it and it will go up in value. Because let's say I got 10 grand, I put it in a drawer, come back in three years, is it still 10 grand? Come back in three years, what is this? Right, this watch is gonna go up in value. It's guaranteed. I've never seen a Rolex go down in value. I mean, come, think about it. So, uh, that's my uh, rich people problem for today. Do I keep both Rolexes or do I sell one? What I really want is like, because here's the thing, I'm not going to wear this. If I put it in the drawer, I'm never going to wear it again. Whichever one I decide to keep is the one I'm going to wear. There's no point in having both of them. They're too similar. I do wear my red coral one, the one I bought a couple years ago. The only other watch that I'm seriously considering, it's just too much money, but I really want a uh, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. Those start at about 30 grand, and there's a two-year waiting list. So if you find one used, you're going to pay 20 to 30,000 bucks for one of those. And um, the one I want has a red dial, of course, but I've yet to be able to find one. And the red dial one I want suddenly has something, for some reason, gone up to $100,000. And I don't want it for flipping purposes. I want to wear it. Like my red coral Rolex that I bought for $6,000 new, I could get 24 now. I could get $20,000 for that watch now. But I don't want to sell it. I want to keep it. And it sucks because I'm like, ah, that part of me that wants to make money wants to sell the watch. Anyway. So, there we go. Bob's rich people problems for today. Something else I picked up today. This uh, little credenza TV stand, I don't know what you call it. Got it, <clears throat> it was, I got it like nothing. But the doors are janky, I can't seem to get them to. You son of a bitch. That one closes. That one closes. <laughs> Oh, I saved money. What a deal I got. <laughs> it's a piece of shit. I'm gonna throw it in the dumpster. <laughs> ah, what a waste of time that was. Mm -hmm.